We're going to take a break from the engine just for a minute. Um, I want to play around with some frame stuff. Um, I just got done cutting to length and surfacing the, well, dressing the two ends of this piece of pipe, uh, tubing, whatever. Uh, this is going to be the neck to our frame. And so I'm going to cut it to accept uh, tapered roller bearings. Um, actually going to end up running a Royal Linfield front end on this, I think. That's the plan right now. Um, I have a certain one that I want to use. I think it's going to be cool. Um, but I'm going to make some dummy spacers to go on to this spindle so I can do all of the like um, outer dressing and everything of this, uh, of the neck to make it look pretty. So I'm gonna make these two really quick. And well, yeah, I'll probably make these two first, then I'll cut these to accept um, the inner race, or the outer race, oh my God, I can't talk. Uh, yeah, I'll cut this to accept the race, and then I'll cut these to go in, um, and then they'll ride on this, but then that also doubles as the, um, also doubles as the spacers for the fixture so um i will essentially just be making these two top and bottom bushings um to imitate the uh bearings but this one's for something else so i'm gonna get it out of there and then we can put a triumph one So this is what I've been looking for. It's actually like if you try and pull it out too fast, it gets stuck, which is exactly what I want. Um, well, I guess I could actually give you dimensions. It's a thousandth difference. So um, just a great um, fitment as far as like not having to move or anything when I'm doing uh, the external cutting on this and then when I put it in the fixture and all that kind of stuff. So very, very happy with this end. Um, so now... What I need to do is flip it around to the other end. Uh, I know this is way too much uh, stick out, but the only other uh, chuck I have, it has like the big back plate and it's not centered. It would have taken me way too long. So I'm just being very careful, but yeah, this is way too much stick out. So we need to get this other end done. We can get it onto the spacers, which then means we can get it onto this and then I can put a live center in the end of it so it will be much more appropriately done but yeah so move on to the next okay so this is kind of what I was talking about um, dummy bushing fake bearing whatever you want to call it spacer this end and then our whole neck and then our other fake bearing um, I'm actually I obviously there was no way for me to really get a good grip on this to turn this down earlier so as I work this outer diameter up well I'll probably knock these down first then I'll start playing with this outer diameter um, in theory I could just run this as is uh, it's it just be really ugly um, you know try and make it look cool is the goal so uh, I'm gonna go ahead I'll probably get these both cut down first really quick and then start going in and clean it all up now that everything is the same diameter, I can kind of start deciding what I want for a pattern. Um, I don't have I don't have a ton of material I can remove between this outer diameter and then where the bearing race is going to live. So I actually kind of like the idea of it being a little bit on the beefier side. So I'm just going to leave uh, the bearing area alone and then just play here in the middle. Um, it's not going to be crazy. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might try and do kind of a nice little hourglass shape, but uh, again, it's not going to be crazy. Whatever it is I do uh, won't be, uh, you know, over the top. Um, I'm really just trying to get kind of uh, you know, get moving on this instead of wasting too much time playing around with uh, little aesthetics. So let's see what happens. Okay, I, I'm done. I have to be done. I've got way more time in this than what I wanted. Um, I originally was going to taper to the center, 
both directions. I thought that'd be kind of a cool shape. Um, but then after I did this side, I quickly ditched that idea. It just took way too long. Um, also, I was way off on what I thought I could do. Um, I think I started with like a 15 degree chamfer or taper or whatever. And it was so aggressive. So I ended up with five uh, degrees of uh, taper. So it goes, five, uh, it goes in about the little over the depth of the bearing race um here and then as a straight cut then five degrees to the center and then straight cut and then just a nice little radius and then again another um slightly over depth of the uh diam or the depth of the uh race so um I may end up going back in and making these bushings uh, smaller uh, outside diameter, but for now this will work. Um, but yeah, I got to be done with this thing. It's uh, I've got way too much time in it, but it's a fun shape. You know, I you don't even got to be able to see it. So what's it matter? But um, yep, done. Stem is in. I did have to take uh, a little bit off of uh, this bushing up here to get it to fit between these. Um, this, I think uh, I showed it before, but I kept saying I think people are going to be a little bummed or disappointed with my frame choice, and this is why. Um, it's rigid. I mean, that's really... A, the, the main reason I know a lot of people do not like that. Um, I just, I deal with so many restorations. I'm tired of restorations. Um, I do engines for so many people that are just going back into another restoration. It's the same thing over and over to me. Um, it's a lot of work. I understand that. I appreciate the work people put into it. But at the end of the day, it's not for me. So, um... That being said, I had a lot of fun with my engine, so I want to have a lot of fun with this frame. I was given this frame by an old friend of mine. Um, he wrecked it way back in the day and thought it would be kind of fun for me to try and fix it. So I cut it off where it stopped being straight, and now I'm going to fill in the gaps. I don't know what it is. I wish I did. I might try and look to see if I can figure out. Um, it's the the giveaways i guess would be this backbone comes in and then it's been like pinched flat um so that might be kind of helpful as far as identifying it and then there's a big flat plate here and i don't know if that was added or if that was part of it too and then it's just got the typical chopper straight tube across here um I'd like to figure out what it is. It'd be kind of neat to know, but not super important. So I'm going to try and look through some of my old catalogs and see if I can't find anything. But regardless, um, a lot of it's going to change. Um, the main structure of it will, like geometry-wise, I'm going to pull the neck almost. I want it to almost be right, I shouldn't say over the exhaust rocker box, but I want to bring the neck considerably back. Where this should be, it'd be, you know, clear up here way out and I don't really want that for this build um, I have a front end in mind that is going to be essentially stock length so that means I'm going to bring the neck let me see bring the neck way in to kind of keep everything low um, to where it should be so um, I have just kind of got this mocked up to see I'm going to get the proper because I'll put plugs in both these lowers and in this one actually this tube may end up being the plug um, and then rosette it and then put the sleeve over top so it's super extra strong and sturdy but um, yeah I just wanted to get that neck done so now I can start mapping everything out I'll probably push everything back just a little bit um, get this line to be just below that radius edge and that should kind of uh, keep everything flowing and then this will be kind of like um, I guess I would compare it to like a Harley the way the front leg kind of goes out to accommodate the engine and then kind of kicks almost um, vertical so uh, that'll probably be the the lines here so I am a little too far back I do need to double check my um, uh, stem angle to make sure I've got the right degree there um, but yeah this is gonna be it <laughs> well we'll see what everybody thinks 
Um, and who knows? I mean, I may end up pulling that engine out one day and throwing it in something else and then getting a different engine in here. So either way, this frame needs to be done. Whatever engine gets put in it is, you know, going to be changing probably throughout its life. But it's all for fun. Just goofing off, having a good time. So um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, yeah, I, and also just to kind of clarify... Uh, the roads around where I'm at are 55 miles an hour straight cornfield, you know, th there's no curbs. I don't have anywhere to speed race around. So building something that's super performance oriented just doesn't make sense. Um, I want to cruise and have fun. Um, it's just, you know, it's casual. It's very much aesthetic to me. I really like doing things that look cool. So... Um, hopefully that kind of justifies it, I guess, but we'll, uh, we'll get some more shit done. Uh, this video isn't going to be all that great, but, um, you guys saw me make this, you saw me make the two, um, spacers and I've been tediously notching, uh, these replacement, um, down tubes, whatever you want to call them. Um, I machined a plug to go in there so i will still drill and rosette um on both sides but uh they're pounded into the bottom and then it's a slip fit for these top ones and so now i have both of those cut um come around this side so you can kind of get the idea um pretty good fit man i'm happy with it uh i think it should be nice and strong nice and sturdy uh like i said it was came up and then right after this about about where this bend is it was kicked back so you know ironically i've got another bend there but this one's intentional um kicks up and then goes uh 90 degrees up and then i will tie in this back um, bone neck so I'm gonna make a plug for this end and then I will notch uh, this in perfectly I think where the line is it's gonna land just right into the bottom of this radius here so kind of, should look kind of cool I've been thinking about doing like a outer sleeve over the um, backbone to kind of tie it all in and give it like kind of a cast look um, I don't know if I'll actually do that. I wanted to do it here too, but these, this angle got way too wacky. I don't think it was a very good idea to have that bottom five degree angle because it really made things difficult um, to try and get a good clean notch here. So it, I, I said it once before, the whole point of me doing this frame was to get a good understanding of what I'm going to be doing. Um, I didn't want to just dive into building an entire frame because I knew I was going to get myself into trouble. So this is a really good opportunity for me to learn things. And I just learned something there. So, uh, I'm sure I'll learn three or four more things. So very low risk, I guess, as far as just repairing a section of the frame, it's going to be super, super strong when I'm done. Um, but yeah, I just, did, I didn't want to go into doing an entire frame for my very first time uh and then be like oh no what did i do so um good opportunity to learn something i i'm gonna clean up there's a bunch of bondo in here that needs to be removed so i can get this weld um you know very strong and sturdy but a lot, a lot of a lot more but i'm gonna end this here uh i'll get more done and that'll be in another video but uh i just wanted to show you guys where i am going to leave you um yeah, we'll see. Hopefully I can make these a little bit better in the future, but man, is it tedious to do things and make it look good. But it'll be an interesting shaped frame. Um, we'll see how it turns out. Royal Enfield front end. Um, it's going to have, from the steering stem uh, to the rear axle, it's uh, actually like the exact same dimensions as a factory rigid triumph frame. So that's kind of cool, I thought. I didn't. I don't like stretched or like four six over frames are not my favorite and this one is um, obviously extended in the rear section and so I removed it in the neck 
Uh, yeah, it'll be, it's gonna be kind of cool. Hopefully, we'll see. I don't know. Come along with me.